to recoup and focus on that bronze medal game. Women's Basketball World Cup here in Sydney, Australia. It's the bronze medal game coming up shortly. Australia taking on Canada. Shona Thorburn alongside Azania Stewart. Two teams losing last night in the semifinals and losing in drastically different styles as the USA just annihilated Canada. 83 to 43 and a heartbreak loss for Australia over China, 61 to 59. Azania, how do these two teams bounce back, get the energy to win here tonight, considering how they lost? Yeah, I think that's such a good point that you make, Shona, the two different styles, how they lost. Canada was not the Canada team that we saw uh, in this tournament. They were really, you know, kind of punched in the face, in my opinion, and didn't react and USA does that to you, so hopefully they can bounce back. Obviously, also a different kind of loss for Australia, an emotional loss, draining. And, you know, the crowd was huge, over 11,000, I think it was 900 in here, was rocking in here. And uh, But both teams have this challenge, not only mentally, but physically they've got to bounce back. It's less than 24 hours. I guarantee you a lot of players haven't done this in their career to play three games games in a row in such a short span, legs are going to be heavy, so it's going to be very important that you do the simple things well. Yeah, you said it. We saw Bridget Carlton there warming up before they went to the player announcements. Slow game for her yesterday, but she's been exceptional for Canada. They need to find her early, and let's hope her shots are falling. These two teams did go up against each other in group play, and what a game that was. Australia coming out on top, 75 to 72. And we watched that game, and I think it was one of Australia's best games. You talked about it. Both these teams, this is their eighth game in 10 days. We're going to have tired legs from either team. Other players are going to have to step up. Who do you think can step up outside of the mainstays scoring-wise of Canada? Well, we've obviously spoke about Bridget Carlton. She's coming up and trying to push for an MVP. Yesterday, they had not one person in double digits, so that is tough. I need the Shea Collies. I need the Fields to step up. Alex uh, Alexandra has been great. But you know what was fantastic? Yesterday, we got to see the younger generation of Canada really have some good minutes in uh, Philippa Che was really fantastic. She had some big blocks. She had four points, five rebounds, and three blocks. So that's great for Canada to have minutes against USA. Yeah, that is great because I think he's, both teams are going to have to go to their benches in this game because of those tired legs. Now Australia, oh, what a heartbreak. And what a game it was last night against China. Losing by two points. You have to rebound. You have to forget about that game. Maybe some tears were, were had after the game in the locker room. Some easy misses by Mariana Tolo, who has been superb for Australia all tournament long. Who's going to have to be there tonight for Australia? Yeah, I think you, we must say uh, Tola has got better and better as she comes out. I think uh, also Talbot, incredible. She had 12 points, 10 big rebounds, but unfortunately she had that little lapse where China just stole that ball and really put them up. Uh, but they have to have a short-term memory. You can't think about yesterday because Today is the big day for the bronze medal. Kayla George has been solid for them, had uh, 10 points last game, and then the game before that, 19 points. 
and nine rebounds. My only concern is I did not see Beck Allen warm up in this game. So I highly doubt she's going to play uh, as she's still suffering uh, from that hit in the Serbia game to her ribs. Well, we saw Lauren Jackson come out number 25 for Australia. She's a GOAT. What an incredible story. What an incredible comeback. She did announce earlier today, Azania, that this is it. She will never wear the green and gold again. Do you think that's a little bit of a motivational tactic for her teammates? <laughs> yeah, and you know, she's done incredible to come back at her age and also retire tiring for so long. Uh, this is her last moment and to really make a push. So if anything, that is fantastic motivation for the Opals to really give her her last medal because she's pretty much won them all. Well, this is it. It's the final game day here at the FIBA Basketball Women's World Cup. Australia taking on Canada for that bronze medal game. And after that, we have China and the USA going for gold. And this is how it happened. Canada over Puerto Rico, US over Serbia, and then USA over Canada. And then on the other side, Australia beating Belgium, China beating France, China beating Australia last night. So we have Canada and Australia going at each other. We will take a quick pause for the playings of the national anthems. Now, the national anthem of Canada. and the national anthem of Australia. Well, how about that, Azania? Coach from Canada, Victor La Pena, singing, singing the national anthem. I like that. Little duo uh, passport, I guess, <laughs> to do both. He is Spanish, but that means so much when he is singing the national anthem. It is my favorite part of international basketball as they get to trade out pins and sing the national anthem. So the referees for today's game, crew chief in the middle, Amy Bonner from the United States, my major Forsberg from Denmark, and Blanca Cecilia Burns from the United States. Well, congratulations to them. That's a big deal to get the, this far. They also get critiqued throughout the tournament, and they're clearly the best to referee. And then here's the best for Canada. Bridget Carlton really playing very well, averaging 13.6 rebounds, also 5.6, and shooting a great clip from the three-point line. So no doubt uh, Australia have scouted her. She plays basketball at Minnesota. 
And we mentioned it, Coach Victor LaPena learning the Canadian national anthem and what a job he has done with this Canadian team since he took over in February. You know not a single player on Canada was even born the last time <laughs> Canada played in this game at a World Cup. That was back in 1986, Azania. Yes, and then Izzy McNamara, she has been incredible. I think a stat that they're missing out on as well is the block shot. She's averaging nearly five block shots in this tournament, has been incredible, has been the block party queen, as you called her, I love that. Well, Sandy Brondello, been the head coach of the Opals for around 10 years now. She's won already a medal at a World Cup with Australia. Can she do it again on home court? We will find out shortly. Well, she spoke yesterday. I did her press conference and she said, look, that's such a tough loss for us, but we've got to bounce back. And right now our main focus is to go home with some silverware. So I think they're ready. You know, they know what's on the line and uh, I don't doubt they stayed in and got to watch a live scout. Go ahead. Canada's starting lineup. Kia Nurse, Bridget Carlton, Natalie of Chamwa, Shay Colley, and Kayla Alexander. Their go-to starting five, right? This is their solid. They have not changed. We've seen teams throughout the tournament change up their five. This has been their solid statement five. They've got experience. They've got vets in there with uh, Natalie Achangwa. Kia Nurse is on a 20-minute restriction, and she has not surpassed that 20 minutes. Azania, if she's playing well, I think that restriction might be out the window here tonight. There's a medal on the line. You do what you can. So Australia's starting five. Steph Talbot, Ezzy, Magbagor, the blocking queen, Mariana Tolo, who has been solid all tournament long. Sarah Blitzavs taking over for that role of Beck Allen along with Sammy Whitcomb. And Tolo now in that starting lineup has been incredible. I feel like she has really, has she got better or better or has she been like that the whole time? And maybe Sandy had realized, wow, I actually need to play her more. Yeah, great point. Tolo, solid performance throughout this tournament and is definitely being rewarded after that first game loss for Australia against France as she was inserted into the starting lineup after that. And I think another good point is when these teams just played four days ago, I think it is now, all the days are blending in. Uh, uh, Canada lost 72 to 75. It was such a close game and it really came down to the last possessions. I can see this game being the exact same, maybe a bit lower scoring because of the tired legs, because how much mileage is in that, those bodies right now. These women have been putting on an absolute spectacle of a show. Women's basketball is on the biggest stage and boy, have they showed up. Australia winning their last five games against Canada at the World Cup. So if history is on their side, that is a bonus. Can Canada break that streak? And we mentioned it, Lauren Jackson. This will be her last game ever wow. with Australia. Again, <laughs> again. Uh, but, you know, this is a beautiful moment for her. And I wonder how she's feeling, probably quite nervous, quite anxious, but also she's been here before and she understands what is on the line. We'll listen in a little bit, see what the last words Victor's telling the Canadians. Let's see, drawing up a nice little play. <laughs> Well, Canada will try to win their third medal in the history of the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. They went bronze back in 1986 and 1979. I mentioned it, not a single player on the roster for Canada who was even born in 1986. Yeah. And the style is so different for Canada, right? They like to slow the basketball down. They like to use the shot clock for a longer uh, period of time. They really like to execute their stuff. So it'll be interesting to see. They're probably going to keep, keep the uh, same style where Australia, obviously, with the speed and the shooting of Whitcomb and Talbot on defense, they're going to want to get out and run in transition. Well, 
tip-off underway here shortly. It is bronze medal game. Are you ready for it? If you're ready, make some noise! You know what time it is. Good afternoon and welcome to the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup here in Sydney, Australia. Shona Thorburn alongside Azania Stewart will be calling this bronze medal game. And that's a quick turnover for Australia. Yeah, that sure is. That's not how you want to start the game. Australia, obviously, in the gold and green, and Canada in the oh so red and white. Carlton. You talked about her three-point shooting, and how about that to start the game for Bridget Carlton? Oh, and she claps it, and she loves it. To see your first shot go in must feel good. And Australia need to slow that down, because if she starts hot and sees the ball going in, it's going to be a long night for Australia. Oh, afternoon, excuse me, it's only 1 p.m. Well, it's the evening in Canada. Yes. Tolo takes the contact, throws it up, draws the foul. So that's going to be a foul going against Kayla Alexander. A little late on that backside help. Good, good uh, possession there by Australia after just turning it over with pretty a few seconds on the clock. Way to get Tolo in the action, rolling to the rim, and she hits the first free throw. So good job there by Mariana Tolo. She missed a couple easy baskets against China, and you hope she was able to sleep after that game thinking about those misses. Kali, fade away, two-point shot is good. So nice aggressivity here, which we did not see by Canada yesterday. They only scored 43 points, and they lost by 40 to the USA. Yeah, they were really struggling as Talbot drives and kicks. Blitzav shot off the front of the rim. Carlton with the rebound. Achamwa. And that's looking good, especially, and the, and the bench loves it. Changwa has that 15 foot and really didn't look for that no. yesterday. And that's good for her to really uh, be aggressive as Alexandra gets and on the floor. That yeah. hustle shows you how important this game is. Blitzavs, drives, passes to Tolo, kicks it out to Steph Talbot. Steph Talbot's open in the corner, in and out, offensive rebound, and a nice putback by Mariana Tolo. Tolo is so effective on the rebounding end. Good uh, body position by her. Nurse to Carlton. Hasn't really touched the ball since her initial three-point basket she made. Kali back to Achangwa. And somehow, Alexander comes up with that, takes her time, shot is off, good Talbot defense. with the rebound. Yeah, no, good defense there by Tolo. Solid to keep her body in front of Alexandra. Wickham, little hesitation, tries to find Ezzy, but it rolls into the hands of Talbot. And now Tolo, nice start to the game, and that's gonna be a blocking foul going against the Chanwa. So Tolo, her second trip in this early quarter. And I, yeah, and I love that from Tolo. Yet again, putting the ball on the floor, showing her versatility and really being aggressive to the rim and putting pressures uh, on the referee to call that. So Chang was first foul and another trip to the line for Tolo. Well, you said it, Azania. And there's uh, the Mariana Tolo fans. Face. Love that. As she rolls in the second, and now, how about that? She has six points, all six points, excuse me, for Australia. Carlton defended by one of the best defenders in this tournament, Steph Talbot, as she slips a little. Now they get it back up to Kali. Kali in and out. Talk about a pull-up. Nice. Great job there by Shea Colley. Oof, that's pretty Shona. I love that in and out with the time running down. Boy, that jump shot is beautiful. Blitzav's getting the big minutes here with Beck Allen on the bench and injured, like you said. And you mentioned she didn't warm up today. She didn't even warm up. She has a warm-up shirt on. 
and we will not see her in this game. Nurse up to a charm while she fakes the handoff, goes right at them, gets it inside to Alexander, not able to hold on to it. And opportunity and numbers now for Australia. As Talbot uses a screen by Tolo, but that's going to be a moving screen call going against Mariana Tolo. If our friends upstairs, yep, they come with the, uh, the replay. Let's have a look. I feel like she was quite solid on that uh, screen. Maybe the knee or the leg trip, uh, but the referees have been so consistent about setting good solid screens right. and making sure and just at the bottom you see a little goat coming in that's Pal Gasol right there a little goat <laughs> oh, who's at the bottom you know of the screen that's a huge goat and he loves women's basketball He's nurse here. takes blitz abs off the dribble that's a tough make and it goes in took the hit Kia nurse Well, we talked about the GOAT, Pau Gasol, another GOAT in the game right now as well. As Blitzavs penetrates baseline, nowhere to go, steps out of bounds, ball back to Canada. And we see Lauren Jackson, LJ in the game, getting her first minutes in her very last game for the Opals. And yep, that's right, all, uh, her foot on the line, referees all over it. I mean, LJ, we talked about it. This, she has announced this will be her last game ever in the green and gold. When she retired six, seven years ago, it wasn't because she wanted to. She didn't really get the opportunity to announce her retirement. It ended because of knee problems and knee injuries, correct? Yeah. So now she has an opportunity to actually celebrate and being out and yes. have a party. Yep. And you know, when the knee injuries happened, we thought maybe she'd be able to come back, maybe she wouldn't. Emmy here into the game for Canada. She's been a bright spot for them off the basket as she takes George off the dribble, but George stays straight up and comes Solid. down with the ball. Solid defense by Kayla George. Talbot, spin move, tough take. Natalie Ajamwa there with the defense, though. And then beautiful defense by Natalie Ajamwa. Takes the body and the spin. Here we see George's great defense. And then right back. The other end, Natalia Changwa. Would come to Talbot. Back to Whitcomb. She takes a little bit of contact, draws a foul, so she's going to get to go to the free throw line. Foul will go against Shea Colley. Pretty physical down there, really. Uh, bodies banging and, you know, elbows flying, so. I think it's a good job by Whitcomb just driving, putting her head down and getting to the rim. Sammy Whitcomb goes two for two for the line. We saw her for the first time in this World Cup yesterday, miss three consecutive free throws in a row. You're right. And she fouled out and put China on the t uh, line. And China hit. made their free throws to did. win that game. They sure did. But you Carlton. She has to forget about that now, Shona. Yes. She's worried. <laughs> She's in this moment. Taking on Blitzaf. She shoots from behind the line off the front of the rim. Emmy here with the offensive rebound and put back. They go inside, Lauren Jackson doing what Lauren Jackson does. So simple, we've seen that shot from her a million times. It's her go-to, it's unguardable, and she hits it for two. Shea Colley might have got away with a travel, but they didn't call it, so you keep playing as Amy here tries to reverse, and another nice defensive possession by Kayla George. Steph Talbot, little hesitation. Nice cut by Sammy Whitcomb. Really lovely cut, Shona. Impressive. Talbot had nowhere to go, but Whitcomb bailed her out. 
Achamwa up to Kali. They find Carlton. That little curl after yep. the down screen has been open all tournament long, not but not today. tonight. Yeah. Today, excuse me, you're right. Shot clock, Emmy here is gonna have to let it go. Not sure she's aware. Well, the block doesn't count. But that was a great defensive possession by Australia. So ball back to them as they lead by one, 14 to 13 over Canada with three minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the first. Yeah, but that block doesn't count, but that is solid, tough defense by Kayla George. Way to stop the Canadians not even getting a shot up shown up. Good defense by the Opals. Well, we got a fan behind us, Azania. Blitz abs now. Jackson, boy, is she tough. Not able to score, but they realize the mismatch. They go inside to her, and she draws the foul, so she's going to go to the free throw line. And that's so smart of Australia. They can see the mismatch with uh, Fields, undersize, under strength, underneath Jackson. That first free throw rolls in and out. Pretty sure Lauren Jackson has never missed two free throws in a row. <laughs> she makes the second of two. I think so. Fields now running the point for Canada. She was open at three, but she has that pull up that time off the mark and balls in the hands to Blitzaps. Wallace finds Blitzaps, who's open in the corner. That three point shot is good. And now Australia with a five point lead at three minutes left in the first quarter, and coach Victor LaPena wants to talk about it. He's got to call a timeout here. Look at this lovely drive, brings the defense. That is an error, Fields. Do not help strong side, because the shooter will light you up every single time. Australia makes Canada pay, and they've got to talk about it in this time out. As calm as always is Victor Lupena and trying to coach and tactically teach his team as players, sorry, all the time and every opportunity, timeout he gets. You saw the statistics, Azania. Both teams shooting the ball well, but what about the free throws? Yeah, the free throws. Uh, Canada have not shot a set yet where Australia are seven from eight. So obviously being rewarded and also because it's been a physical game, but they're driving and really putting pressure on the referees. And a blocking foul is going to go against number 25, Lauren Jackson, as she, Carlton tries to set a screen on her and she just says, get out of my way. The one thing that hasn't changed, maybe with age, fine wine, but Lauren Jackson still plays aggressive, doesn't she? Oh, yes. She, she still tells you how, you how she feels. Nurse with a tough layup, and you said it right now, Australia, I think the first minutes of this quarter was more aggressive attacking the basket, and they were rewarded by the referees. Yep, so Canada do the, the same. Line and exactly what Canada have done out yeah. of that timeout. Yeah. And Kia, you know, under the minute restriction as she's coming back, and she's looking very, very 
Uh, she's looking good, in my opinion, really getting in, back into her stride. And she's using all those 20 minutes. She's been very effect efficient and effective in 20 minutes of basketball. Kia now has four points for Canada after those free throws. Blitzavs, Canada falling back into his own. They get it inside to the GOAT. And again, another foul drawn by Lauren Jackson, but that's gonna be Kayla Alexander's second foul, which I think is more concerning for Canada. I think you're right because she, who's their next sub? You know, they have Che who's quite young. She's 18, not really experienced, but she has played some good minutes in this tournament. So she shouldn't be too nervous, but they do send um, now Natalia Changwa to the table. So no doubt she'll be subbed out. Well, we've talked about Lauren Jackson and you could talk about Lauren Jackson for all years, day. Yeah. all day long, <laughs> the comeback. 41 years of age, wanted her children, her two boys to see her play. And boy, have they got to experience that. She is now tied for the most games at a FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup with 43, along with Super. Janet, no, Janet Arcane oh, okay. from Brazil. And she's more my Era. generation uh, than yours. And also she's from Brazil. So I remember growing up playing against her later parts of her career. You want to talk about a baller, Janet Arcane? Shout out to you. I might have to go ahead and have a Google. Google her. She was absolutely incredible. She holds some of the scoring records at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. Nurse's shot is off. Amy here with the board. Can't finish. And now Wallace puts her shoulder down. That's a tough take. And a late foul call goes against Naira Field. I think that was a hard call that went against Canada on that one. But again, Azania, you mentioned it. This one here, Shona, I'm gonna say, tough call because we've seen teams play way more physical, a lot more hands, a lot more body. And that one, I'm, and that's her second foul also. And what's so difficult is the tournament's been played so hard, so physical, not a lot of uh, fouls have been called. And then now you get in this game and it's kind of whistle happy. But the thing is, you've got to adjust, right? As a player, it doesn't matter about yesterday, the day before in the tournament, you've got to adjust on the fly in this game. Yep, every game you have to adjust to what the referees are letting you do. And right now, Australia, in my opinion, are the more aggressive team and they are being rewarded by the referees. That pass is picked up by Achamwa somehow and she scores and it's an and one. Well, Achamwa now just taking a little bit of a breather on the floor. Yeah, as she, she somehow said, made the basket. And she said, my back there, it, she pretty much tripped over. Uh, Imagine, Imagine's right? leg made the and one. Let's have a look at this great rebound. Well, actually hustle first here, and then she falls over. And this is a better angle for us. Thank you, cameraman. And really takes a hit. Shots off the rim. Amy here there with the offensive rebound. She kicks it out to Kali. Extra pass to Nurse. Nurse is open and it's good. Great job there by Canada. Smart play by Kali finding the shooter and Nurse knocking it down. Yeah, great job by Nurse. That was a deep three, but so can George shoot the three. Well, what about that response by Kayla George? Can't leave shooters open. And George is definitely a shooter. So Nurse is able to draw the foul. Lauren Jackson not too happy about that call as she's gonna pull down her second foul as well. And some great minutes by her is Lauren Jackson. She's gonna go off right now and Mariana Tolo back into the game along with Ezzy Magbigor. What do you think about it? It was, it was hard, we couldn't really see up close, up close how much contact was made. No, I know. She's obviously frustrated, but 
you never foul, right? <laughs> As a player, you always say, I didn't do that. But referees uh, have a better angle than we do. Um, but I think it's the right call. And you know what? We know the referees are calling fouls. So if you go aggressive, put up the shot aggressively, yeah. they are rewarding the shooter right now. Wallace. Little penetration, great job beating the defender as she finishes an easy layup around the basket. Do you know what? We haven't really spoken about Wallace. She's really been under the radar because we've been talking about so many stars, but she's really played solid minutes, gritty minutes. Good defensive play by Whitcomb. She tips it to Talbot. Talbot pushing it. They get it to Whitcomb, and Sammy Whitcomb's shot is off the front of the rim. And a great rebound to give them an extra possession. Game clock and shot clock. Talbot, oh, gets Kia Nurse off of her feet, misses that, but she gets another offensive board. And Sammy Whipcomb is well off the mark for that three-point attempt. So Canada, in my opinion, got very, very lucky those last three possessions Ooh, by I held my breath on that possession because great rebounding, extra possessions, and that's a, you know, a rare miss by Wickham. She is a three-point shooter, and she better keep shooting it. That's a wide-open shot, and it's the right shot. So 10 seconds left till the end of the first quarter. Collie now is going to one-on-one. -on -one. Good job by Wallace. Almost turns it over, gets it back, lets it go. And that shot is no good. Well, what a game we have for you as Australia now are leading 27 to 21 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, and for me, I think Australia there, as we see the numbers, shooting 71% from two and 33%, uh, two from six from the three-point line. Getting to the free throw line, I think that's a big, major key, as DJ Khaled would say, wouldn't he? A major key, 11 from 12 is a lot of points from the free throw line, and it's because uh, Australia have been the more aggressive uh, players going to the rim, putting their head down, but that woman there, Bridget Carlton, really found her stroke, uh, but needs to find it a bit more, really. But you know what? I must say, Australia doing a wonderful job on defense. They're really taking Canada out of there. You know, we've seen that little 15-footer curl shot all tournament. Now they don't have that wide open shot. Well, Bridget Carlton, number six from Canada, played all 10 minutes in that first quarter. And I would say Steph Talbot, one of the best defenders in this tournament, she played eight minutes in that quarter. And every eight minutes Talbot was on the court, she was defending Bridget Carlton. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. Talbot is known for her gritty, up-in-your-face uh, defense. So but to put up 27 points in the first quarter, that's quite a lot. Um, so if I'm Canada here, I just want to chip away. I don't want to let this game get too far out of hand. Well, the fans definitely showed up and showed out in their different wigs and hats, and I love it. The arena's starting to fill out. Uh, go ahead and download, scan your QR code for Courtside 1891. Keeps you up to date with all the scores, all the latest games, especially this one and then the gold medal game. Second quarter action underway as Canada trails by 6, 27 to 21 over Australia. And you mentioned it, 27 points. That's a lot, Azania, in a first quarter. It's the second best point, ta point tally in a first quarter in the World Cup. Their most was in 32 back in 2018. Carlton, it's good. She gets it off in time. Didn't really look like it from our angle, but the referees let it go. So good job, good awareness, as Carlton now has five points for Canada. Really good awareness. Wallace stop pops front rim. Achamwa with there with the rebound, and Achamwa has one foul, and Kayla Alexander has two. 
something to be a little bit concerned about. We saw yesterday some of the young guns for Canada, the post players who typically don't play a lot of minutes, they came in and they did a good job, especially in that fourth quarter against the USA. But when it comes down to experience, Canada does not have a lot of experience they, on their bench. They don't. You're right. It's uh, Che. Carlton, the shooter, wide open. Nice play. No foul call. And her shot is well off the mark. As Carlton is talking to Amy Bonner, the referee there, saying, she, she hit me after. And a little bit of a mix-up underneath the basket between Tolo and Alexander. What do you think of that foul? If you're not falling, calling it on one end and then just a reach in on the other end. Yeah, both teams have to adjust to what's happening. And also, Alexandra needs to be careful as she do does have two fouls. Wallace. Great job by her. You mentioned earlier in the first quarter, we have not talked a lot about her. Every game, I have an impression she's playing a little bit more and more, and especially since Beck Allen went down. And she's taking advantage of these more minutes. Yeah, you're right. And a steal by Talbot. Beautiful timing on that. Talbot, no one picks her up. So she says, why not me? Lovely sequence of events for Talbot, a steal, and then Ryden walks right into that jump shot. Kali, tough take, no good, fight for the boards. Tolo comes up with it. And Achamwa there at the back of our screen is slow to get up. And now Tolo finds Talbot. She hit one down the last time. And how about that? Five consecutive points for Steph Talbot as Canada needs to call a timeout. A really lovely sequence. And you know what's happening? It's on the defensive end. Australia are locking Canada up and then pushing and getting in that rhythm in the offensive. Both teams, uh, you know, it's tiring, but Australia right now looking like the solid team will listen in to the timeout. Okay, try to find the what was the you have. With Desi, you with Tolo, okay? Be careful you in the and you can switch, switch with uh Gia. Okay, with the Tolo. Well, Lauren Jackson loves it. And uh, she also speaks French. Excuse that, but it is all emotions here as Australia have taken the lead 34 23. Can Canada answer? They get it up to Carlton. We talked about it. They're going small ball, four out, motion concept, nurse. Defended by Talbot, she spins, get her off, gets her off her feet, can't score, and Fields with the rebound. Collie gets it back to Fields, who finds Nurse, and great passing by Canada. That's called unselfish basketball, as they find Kia Nurse at the end of that possession, yeah. wide open for three. Fantastic ball movement by Canada. Tolo. Inside to Ezzy. She gives it up to Wallace. Wallace now off the mark, Alexander. So Canada is playing small ball. Could be an advantage on offense as Fields had open players. She missed Carlton and Collie. Maybe going for a faster look. She did have the drive and the kick. Magbegor, defended by the smaller Carlton. Whitcomb, 
Shots off the mark, Cauley comes up with it, pisses it to Kia Nurse, no one's back, and that's an easy two-point basket. So a great run here after that timeout by Canada, forces coach Sandy Brondello to call a timeout of her own. And that was a great adjustment here as we see the air ball and then Collie throw it right to Key for that nice little floater and fast break. Uh, a good change up by Victor Le Pena, in my opinion, uh, to go small ball and go quicker, smaller. We'll listen in to the timeout. but you also heard the players saying, no more threes for Nurse, come on, let's go. It's Kia Nurse, it's two of two. 13 points so far in this game for Canada. And uh, that's such a good point, Kia Nurse will definitely have been the top of their scalp. And I've spoken about Kia's minute, she's on 13 and how productive she is. She has Excuse me, she's on 11 minutes and she scored 13 points. Talbot finds Ezzy. Ezzy's shot rolls in. So Ezzy McIgore showing her range. And that's Ezzy's first two points. Fields was open earlier. And Alexander comes up with the offensive rebound, kicks it outside to Kali. That's no good. Fields follows that shot and shoots it herself. So good offensive rebounding two. by Canada. Yep, two back-to-back -back great rebounds, especially when Alexandra's in there. She's known for her rebounding. Whitcomb. Litzavs. How about Blitzab this afternoon? What a game she is having already. And good recognition there by Lauren. It goes in, she gets tripled, maybe even quadrupled, and she pulls the ball back out. Kali takes McBegore off the dribble, nowhere to go. And that's a turnover. People need to move around the penetration. Good job getting back on defense is Kali. And no real movement for Canada. They have the, the drive, but nobody is spotting back up. They're trying to find the mismatch to Alexander. They do, but Lauren Jackson's going to be called on the foul for the foul. And I think a couple, last couple possessions, I know they got the foul call here, but the Canadian players, they're holding on to the ball or they're dribbling it a little bit too long as people are open. Hot potato, you gotta move that ball faster. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's Lauren Jackson's second foul. Alexander to Nurse. Nurse is open, she's already knocked down two as that ball hits the front of the rim. And now no one picking up the ball, but Steph Talbot slips, but does find Blitzavs. George hustles. Naira wanted to hit it off the feet of George. Instead, it ends up in the hands of Carlton. And now, Kali, strong take to the basket. That was an amazing take by Kali, and then she's had to run back down on defense. Lauren Jackson's three-point shot attempt is off. Pretty quick up and down right now, that couple of possessions. Uh, going very, very quickly, steals up and down. And not really Canada's style, that plays into Australia's style of basketball. Canada like to slow down, use the clock, run a good offense. 
Achalwa, nice slip, great pass from Kia Nurse. Can't score, but she draws a foul, so she'll go to the free throw line. And this is a great slip by Natalie Achongwa. And that will be Kayla George's now foul. That's her, her second. So George and Jackson on two, two fouls. fouls. Yes. And for Canada, we have Fields and Alexander with two fouls each. Achongwa not able to convert either of those free throws so important in this type of game Talbot tough tough layup Alexander comes down with the rebound now Fields Penetrates, hard to the basket, can't score, draws the foul against Wallace, so she'll go to the free throw line. And you talked about free throw shooting, Azania. Yeah, Canada, three from seven now, but before they were on zero, but they're really, you know, this happened in the first quarter. I'm sorry, that is a foul, where Australia in the first quarter drove and got the fouls called by the referees and made it to the line. Here, now we see Canada taking, you know, the same leaf out of their book, driving to the rim and getting the calls that is deserving. I think that is a foul. And another miss for Canada, but how about that? Naira Fields follows her miss, comes up with the rebound, ball out of bounds. It will go back to Canada with 10 seconds on the shot clock. You got to box out the shooter, Azania. Yes, you do. We used to have to run for that. If you, if you uh, yeah. If Quick you little missed, down and back for the yeah, Opals. Yeah, if you missed. And almost a turnover by Canada. Lots of time, they get it to Achamwa. Up to Fields. Fields now is fouled by Kayla George. So that's gonna be her third. Yeah, and she knows it. She's disappointed with herself. She doesn't move her feet there. That is a foul, she has to sub out. Well, the good thing is when you have a bench like Sandy Brondello does, you get to put another player in who has very limited minutes, but I think played very, very well. And that is Darcy Garbin we see checking into the game for the first time. Yeah, Garbin, uh, she did not play yesterday, but she has played some solid minutes throughout this tournament. And when you've got foul trouble, you've got to go to your bench. And, and Australia's bench is much deeper than the Canadians. Well, that time, Naira Fields goes two for two. So now Canada only trailing by four, just over three minutes to play until halftime. Wallace somehow fights her way in, gets the shot off, and it's good. I really like this Wallace woman. I haven't spoken about her enough. She is so tough. Nurse, can she make it three? No, she couldn't. That's off the back of the rim. Kayla Alexander almost comes up with a, a steal. Great job there, but that's what you don't want to do. And guess what? That's her third. Yes. Silly foul, you've done the work. Just get back. And that is frustrating we're in the second quarter here look you've done the work Alexandra do not put your feet at your feet and your hands in she's gonna have to sub out and they're gonna go back to small ball and sub in Collie great first half for Christy Wallace as she drives kicks it but it's tipped no it's blocked that was a block? Yeah. It wasn't a pass to Blitzavs in no. the corner? No, look, here. It's a block from Natalia Chongwa. I'm going to give it to her. I'm a statistician as well. Showing her I've got all drops. Blitzavs. No good. Jackson with the offensive rebound. 
Gets her own rebound, fading away. What a game this woman's having. She knows what it takes to win at this competition is Lauren Jackson. Nine minutes so far, seven points. Kia Nurse falls hard to the ground, draws the foul, so she will get to go to the free throw line. Canada shooting only 55% from free, free throw range. And here is Lauren keeping the ball high and finishing. And there's Beck Allen, she loves it. Spider says, well done, Lauren Jackson. Kia Nurse goes two for two from the free throw line. And checking in for Canada is number four, Sammy Hill, making her first appearance in this bronze medal game. They go to Jackson, three-point shot. Hits the front of the rim, ends up in the hands of Kali. Kali pushing the pace. Kali goes all the way, and no one stopped her. So an easy two-point basket for Shay Kali. She's uh, put the Jets on there, so <laughs> now she's got eight points. Nobody slowed her down. She went straight to the rim. I don't blame her. Talbot finds Garvin. Excellent three-point shooting big as she goes reverse layup. Not there, Lauren Jackson with the alley-oop put back. Nurse, nice take, she thought it was an AM1, doesn't matter, she got the two points. As coach Sandy Brondello, I think defensively, wants to talk about a few things. We have a minute, 18 seconds left in this second quarter. Australia leading Canada, 45 to 41. And there, Carlton just losing contact of Lauren Jackson. You've got to box her out. A women's World Cup, so uh, the highest is Dinah Tarassi at 63. So do you think? You I maybe think we could see Lauren Jackson beat that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a foul is going to be called against Sammy Hill, and that is Canada's third team foul. Whitcomb. into Ezzy, finds Talbot. Talbot just goes right at Nurse, can't score, gets her own rebound, and that's gonna be a block by Achamwa. And Achamwa, you need to be there, but you also need to be careful because we know Kayla Alexander has three fouls, Achamwa has one. Yeah, but that's solid defense by the Canadians. They leave open Whitcomb. No good, Carlton comes down with the rebound. Well, Kali 
Goes one on one, loses the ball as they were playing large. Talbot takes it all the way and it's an and one for Steph Talbot as she just picks up the steal. No one picks her up defensively and Carlton can't do anything. Look at this. But foul. Full court layup, nice, takes the hit. Reverse layup, that's big for Steph Talbot. Boy, she is fast out the gates. And one for Steph. So good job there by Steph Talbot. She puts Australia up 48-41. There's 34 seconds left in the second quarter. Full court pressure here by the Opals. Fields up to Kali. Hand off to Kia Nurse. Misses the slip of Natalia Chamwa. She comes back, sets her a screen. Kia with a good first half. She drives on Magpagor, and that shot rolls in. There's 10 seconds left. One last possession for Australia. They go inside to Garvin. Nice tip pass to Steph Talbot in the corner. And it's good at the buzzer. Steph Talbot. And what a half she has had as she now puts Australia up 51 to 43. How about that shot, folks? What a lovely possession there. She knew she was drawing the double. Uh, Garvin and just taps it out. And the bench love it. And uh, well, this halftime score. Exactly what we expected, Azania. Australia leading Canada, but it's been a tight one, 51 to 43 at halftime. And uh, Sandy Brondello made a good point there. She took that timeout. Let's finish strong, and that's what Australia did. They managed to get to the free throw line, 12 out of 13. They're shooting a good clip. Uh, the win in the rebound in game 21 to 17 and the assist game and also the steals. Talbot, incredible first half, 11 points. Nurse with 19 points and Nurse has only, has already played um, Shona 18 minutes. She's on a 20 minute restriction. You think it's out uh, the window? That Sorry. limit Sorry, was Nabin. out the window. This is bronze medal game at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. And we get to see the best plays of the first half. It's been an emotional game for both of these teams. Both teams putting everything on the line, being physical, being aggressive. But for me, Talbot, incredible first half. She's been so solid for the Opals, doing it all, shooting that mid-range jumper, shooting the three, driving to the basket, stealing the ball. She's all over the place. She's all over the place. Have I been in Australia for too long, people? Yes, I have. I sound like an Aussie. Well, all smiles after that made basket and a great heads up play by Darcy Garbin to find Talbot. And let's not forget Kia Nurse on the other end as you see her there celebrating one of her two made three point baskets. Oh boy, what a game do we have for you. You mentioned tired legs, Zazania. I don't see a lot of tired legs because they know what is on the line. Yeah, really, I, I must admit, everyone's looking pretty fresh, pretty good. Both teams looking and having to go to their benches because of foul trouble. But uh, a good, solid show and a performance for both these teams. Uh, Canada down. 51 to 43. They're gonna just have to regroup and probably need this halftime to just get some rest on. And they've got to come out solid in the third. But if it's anything to do with that woman, LJ Lauren Jackson, the GOAT of women's basketball, is playing in her last game. It means a lot for her to make sure she gets that bronze medal. Well, don't go far because we have a great game on our hands. And no surprise, because this has been a wonderful FIBA Women's World Cup. We will be right back after these messages. Who will you become when the moment arrives? 
And you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands. It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. Young, the captain. Nice crossover as she just beats everyone to the basket. That's pretty, really pretty nice move. Now Li Yuan, no one picks her up, but Kayla George says no, not here, not tonight. Carlton, shot clock's winding down. She slips, isn't able to get the shot off. Collie does, and it goes in. Well, not the prettiest looking shot, but it doesn't matter because that's three more points for Canada. Beck Allen, and every time she's on the court, she looks like she's Grimacing. grimacing. Yep. Nice pass from Sammy Whitcomb to Steph Talbot. And now coach Zhang Wei wants to talk to her team. And nice hands by Canada as Austin, well, Jay gets her back with a block of her own. And Canada come up with the ball. Collie now. I love it. Nice ball handling. How about that fake as a little hesitation? Get Alexander on her heels. Ooh, Shona. Well, they got to get it over half, and they do. Oh, but a steal by Wang Siyu to Yang. She pulls it out, finds Wang, who takes her time in the game. It's tied again with 46.6 seconds left here in the semifinals wow. of the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup get two points and they're already nearly down 20. And what a pass from Gray to Wilson again. Great Vegas connection, I guess you hey. could say. Champagne mummies for sure. Bag the gore. How about that? Beautiful. Nice little play there. No doubt they've practiced that one, shown a perfect back screen with under a second. Still lots of time though for the USA to score as Unescu with a deep three point shot at the buzzer is good. And that's what happens when you shoot a little bit too early at the end of the quarter, folks. So the US with those three extra buckets at the buzzer. Welcome back. It's currently halftime of the bronze medal game at this year's FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. And if that woman right there, Kia Nurse, has anything to say about it, she is going to try and will her Canadian team to the podium as Canada trails 51 to 43 at halftime, though. Yes, yeah, she's got 19 big, big points, shooting 50% from the three point line. Uh, Sandy Brondello told her team about her, you know, I mean, you don't need to introduce her. She's a WNBA player and plays very, very well. And also she's finding her way to the basket. She's driving, she's being aggressive, she's shooting the three. And we're gonna need to see another second part of that effort in this in this half. But for me, is the timing. We've, I've spoke about it. She's only on a 20 minute restriction. I spoke to her about two days ago in a press conference. I said, hey, 
you still on that 20 minute restriction because we've seen her the most play 24 minutes she's at 18 minutes right right now and you said it's out the window uh when you're playing for a medal so that will be interesting because right now she is the hot hand for canada and for australia steph talbot well the most memorable shot she has made in this first half has to be that three-point shot right at the buzzer to end the second quarter as she has 11 points two of six from three a uh, two-point range two of four from three-point range but for me it's everything she's doing also outside of scoring she has the five boards the three assists and two steals and yes yeah, she's been all over the place she's so strong so physical and just so fast and she's having to do a lot for the opal she's got the matchup to stop uh, carlton bridget excuse me bridget carlton same thing uh, as she's been the scoring hand in this tournament and she's doing a great job locking her up but she's doing a good job also on the offensive end for me Lauren Jackson is the story of the day really pushing for this bronze medal it is Lauren Jackson's final game in an opals uh, they say gold and green don't they Yep, they do. The gold and green, Lauren Jackson. She used to be number 15. Now she is playing in number 25. Yeah, and a, a lovely story. Uh, Kayla George obviously is 15 now after uh, she's had that for a fair few yes. years. And she spoke to Lauren Jackson when she was coming back. She said, hey, I know it's your number. I don't mind. Would you like it? And Lauren said, no, no, that's your number now. Please take it and wear it with pride. And that's why Lauren uh, wears 25. And they even got matching tattoos a couple of days ago, didn't they? They got Sisterhood 15 uh, on their arm. So that's kind of a cool story and a moment that they won't forget as teammates and, and as a team. You said it as we see Lauren Jackson coming back out onto the courts. If not the best basketball player of all time, she's got to be one of them. And that very short list of one of them is Lauren Jackson. And what a beautiful story. And career. And career. Yeah. And just for her to be able to come back at 41 years of age and perform at the level she has performed at. And so far, this is the best game, the most important game. She is playing the best game of this tournament Whoa. for herself. <laughs> yeah, I told you. She looked a bit nervous at the beginning of the game, but no doubt she's been here before. She knows what it takes uh, to get them over the line for that bronze medal. Talbot leads all game leaders in rebounds, scoring, and assists. That's a classic Australian hat, isn't it, with the corks to keep away the flies. But there is our player that we've spoken oh so much about. Is Lauren Jackson is the focus player. She's so tough. I guarded her in the Olympic Games in uh, 2012 in London. And she's just, she's so intelligent with, with the ball, but also so physical. She uses her, her strength, her height. Uh, she posts up the smaller guard that we saw her do versus uh, Fields down here on the other end. So they'll probably look to post her up some more as Canada will now jog out and start their warm up with two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Yeah, long halftime for Canada as they're just coming out of the locker room now as we see Canada's game leaders. Nurse with 19 points, Carlton those three assists and Fields with four rebounds. And Carlton only with five points and the next leading scorer is Shea Colley, who's had some really nice drives, full court layups really. Uh, probably need a bit more production out of Bridget, but when you've got uh, Talbot defending you, that's a tough ask, you know, maybe she needs to be more of the decoy, but then they need to be careful with foul trouble also. You've got Alexandra with uh, three fouls uh, and Bridget's on two fouls and Fields is on two fouls. So not bad, it's just Alexandra, who's a big factor, right? That she's their post player and experience and their big rebounder. Yeah, you said it, Kayla Alexander has been excellent for Canada defensively, especially rebounding. 
doesn't get a lot of looks at the basket. They also don't need to run plays for her. She's really a type of player who lets the game come to her. They run things around her, averaging over those 10 rebounds a game. Eight points here tonight. It's been a little bit slow for her as she has three boards and zero points, but she's been dealing with some foul trouble. Well, Victor Le Pena there asking his bigs to run and the guards to pass it in. So let's see if they can do that as Australia now are coming out of their little break before the start of the second quarter. Download your World Cup app. I know it's the last day, but you can still get all the old news, highlights, stats. Follow your favorite team. Third place game. Welcome to the finals. Well, we are 20 minutes away from finding out who will take that place on the podium and have a bronze medal around their neck. It's a big 10 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, excuse me. Good afternoon and welcome back to the bronze medal game here at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup in the Sydney Superdome. Australia leading Canada 51 to 43. Tolo takes the contact, finds Whitcomb who takes her time, can't make it. Blitzavs there for the offensive rebound. Kicks it out to Magbigor. Tolo goes inside to Ezzy. Ezzy spins, Carlton from behind for the block though. Solid defensive stand there by Canada. Exactly what they want coming into this third quarter. Achamwa wants to go inside to Alexander, instead goes hard against Magbigor, and Magbigor is going to be called for the foul. So Natalie Achamwa will get to go to the free throw line, where she is currently 0 of 3. That's a great drive. Line. Yeah. Good defense here. Carlton being solid and coming over, and then Natalie down the other end, Achamwa. Uh, also putting pressure on the rim. And we saw both teams have their quarters when they were aggressive, driving to the rim, get rewarded. Oh, good job there by Ajamwa. As I mentioned, she missed three free throws in that first half. And she was shooting 13 of 15 in this tournament from free throw range before those misses. Well, Talbot. Pulls it back out, gets it up to Tolo, to Wickham, Wickham, back to Talbot, who was great in the first half. Blitz abs. And a holding foul is gonna go against Kia Nurse. And we see, I think she had a mismatch in trying to defend Ezzy Magbagor. It's not a bad foul, to be honest. Yeah. And it's only her first, so she can afford it. Wickham. Nice little hesitation, drives baseline, finds Talbot. Talbot off the front of the rim. Chamwa reverses it to Nurse. Now hard, aggressive step out defense by Australia, especially when Kia Nurse is coming off of a bomb ball screen. Unfortunately, Magbagor there a little bit too aggressive as she is called for the reach in. So that is going to be Magbagor's second, second consecutive foul in this quarter as well. Nurse, three-point shot off the front of the rim. Blitzavs traces down the rebound. Tolo with a big screen just after half. And Blitzavs nowhere to go, turns it over to Nurse, and now Turs, Nurse, Kicks it out to Carlton, who's been quiet since the beginning of the game. Fortunately, can't make that shot as Talbot falls to the ground on the rebound. Oh. 
Macaulay a little bit too aggressive there defensively as she is going to get called for the foul. Let's have a look here. Just tries to ride over that screen and gets her hands in. Tolo to the cutting blitz as great job there. And this is what we have seen all tournament long, especially with uh, Blitzaz and Talbot. You know, they go into yeah. the high post, the, the post player off of the free throw lane extended. The larger guard either face cuts or back cuts, and they're excellent at going inside and finding that mismatch. Yeah, and then Nurse, here she goes and takes her break. And Fields will come back in. As Blitz out, goes two of two from the line. And now Fields running things offensively for Canada. They get it up to Kali. Kali, nowhere to go. Good defense. They switch here. She keeps her dribble. She finds Carlton. Carlton's three point shot is well off the mark as Whitcomb comes up with a defensive rebound. And Carlton just hits Tolo. And that's what happens. No one called the screen for nope. Carlton. And then no one helped her and picked up Sammy Whitcomb. Yep. You're right. That was a tough screen by Tolo. And Victor La Pena is not happy. He's saying, you cannot walk into that screen. That is a dangerous kind of play. But Tolo was there for a long time. She set her feet. And then Whitcomb. Yeah, no one called it. Yeah. I would be mad at my teammates if I was Bridget Carlton right yeah. now. And then you leave wide open Whitcomb, the place where she's the most successful. And a timeout, let's listen in. Well, one yep. of the greatest to ever play is that man right there, Pau Gasol, a FIBA legend, also a FIBA ambassador out here supporting this year's FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. Well, Canada, they're having to create a lot on their own, as you see tonight. Only seven assists in this game so far. Chamwa. They're looking inside. They're just having a hard time getting the ball inside as Kayla Alexander has to work incredibly hard. But how about that? You get the ball inside and something good happens. Yeah, something great happens. And Alexander really needed that. I think she's not really had moments that she could go one-on-one. -on -one. That might be her first shot attempt of the game. Tolo. That was a nice pass from Whitcomb. She was able to hold on to it. And now you hear the fans in the background as Lauren Jackson is checking into the game for Mariana Tolo. Magbegore. Talbot gets it to Wickham. Whitcomb puts it up, off the mark, and that's a 24-second shot clock violation as the ball did not hit the rim. Good stop there by Canada. Solid defensive moment. If they can just string a few of those together and get some solid looks down here and just start to chip away at this lead. And we have a little bit of blood on Blitzaps. You know who needs knee pads is Australia. 
because they dive on the floor. Uh, Whitcomb has one of those black plasters or band-aids, wherever you're from, you call it. Uh, blood on the side, on, on her knee. Talbot has one, she dives on the floor. And well, now Blitzar has to take a sub. Yeah, crew chief said, no, that took too long. You're going to have to go out as Christy Wallace, who's had a great game for Australia, checks back into the game. Carlton gives it up to Fields. Fields now finds a Chamwa. Chamwa hesitated. No need to hesitate. Shoot it, Nap. So good job there by a Chamwa. She knocks down that shot. Canada now need to dig down, get a couple stops. If you're Australia, you want to keep this pressure on. They go inside to Magbegor. Magbegor spins back baseline. Can't score, but she's fouled, Azania. No, Shona. And guess who fouled her? And that woman. Alexandra's fourth here. I think that's, is that solid defense or is that solid defense? I think that's as good as you can get. She moves her foot, feet, she gets her hands up and Victor is not happy. And I agree with that one. You know, I feel like the referees have done a good job and sometimes they get it wrong. But especially when you've got a main player uh, like Alexandra, she's on four. So they're going to send uh, Ami here to the bench, uh, excuse me, to the table. Well, yeah, Kayla has to come out. Yeah, she's on four. And that's disappointing, especially when there's so much of the game in. But another Kayla will sub in now, Kayla George, who also has three fouls. So if I was Canada, I would take it exactly at Kayla George and put the Opals in the same position as Canada is in. Carlton now a Chamwa. That shot is well right, as you heard her screaming right to right. And now Fields picking up a little bit of full court pressure here by Canada. Just th something I think they need to do. There is just over 15 minutes here to play for that bronze medal game. That bronze medal, excuse me. Wickham back door. Not sure she even saw the pass. No, she wasn't, but George is always looking for her guards to go back door. She usually gets Talbot on this back door. Jackson going to work against the Chamwa. And that is vintage Lauren Jackson, folks. Vintage, I love it. Fine wine, Jackson looks oh so good. She's winding back the clock. Fields, no one to pass to, so just takes the contact and goes in all on her own. I really like that drive from Fields. Got in deep, finished for two. Why not? Why not, folks? Lauren Jackson. Well, Jackson just having a field day right now. She must know about that uh, scoring as she strips the ball from Naira Fields, but it's gonna stay Canada ball. There's 13 seconds on the shot clock. She was at 58, correct? And then the leading points tally for any player was Diana Tarazi. In, in medal games, we're just talking right. about medal games. She's at 58, make that 62. So she's got two more, she just needs one more basket to beat. To tie it. Yeah, to, no, to beat to it. To beat it? Yeah, 63 is, is Tarasi. And she's at 62. Yeah. So she needs two more to beat it. Correct. One basket is what I said, sorry. Oh, in fact, my friends upstairs told me no. That is the best tally of points, so she's beaten it. My maths isn't as good as I think it is. It's not my strongest point. Talbot now just throws it up, and Lauren Jackson, oh goodness me, how happy are these Opal fans? And a lot of these young fans who have been out all 10 days at this tournament, I'm sure never thought that they would be able to watch Lauren Jackson live, and she is putting on a show in her last 
game in the green and gold. Now Canada, Nurse, there's five seconds on the shot clock. She's defended by George. She stops, she pops off the front of the rim. Ball in the hands of Wallace. Talbot, extra pass to Whitcomb. Talbot now, and they throw it up to Lauren Jackson. And it is the Lauren Jackson show here in the bronze medal game at this year's FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. Beautiful pass in there, high low. She's got the height advantage on uh, Emmy here. And she's just going to work down low. Fields. Shot is off the mark. Talbot there for the defensive rebound. George. Nowhere to go. Wants it back, though. She gets it back. She drives baseline. Can't go anywhere. But Amy here is called for the foul. No, and that, that is going to be the 15 foul going against Canada. So that will put Kayla George on the free throw line. Yeah, and here, look, just throw it up. Nice catch, good finish. Lauren Jackson is, is winding back the time, folks. Oh, she looks good. She's fine wine, fine Australian wine down here in Sydney. It has been the Lauren Jackson show here in her last ever game as an Opal. And we spoke about the moment and she knew it. <laughs> and she's come out and absolutely put on a performance. And nice job there by Kayla George. As Australia now with a 12-point lead. Feels like that lead should actually be a little bit more. So Canada is sticking around. They can get some defensive stops, find their shooters coming open. They'll get right back in this game. Fields, definitely a player who can score some points quickly as Lauren Jackson reaches in and fouls. So that's going to put Fields on the free throw line. That's a good job by Fields, attacking the slower feet of Lauren Jackson. And Lauren just comes down and we said, Lauren doesn't waste a foul now. You're not going to score that bucket. <laughs> she uh, fouls well and she's going to have to make it from the line. And another free throw miss for Canada. Free throws have not been falling for them in this game as Canada are now 10 of 16 from the free throw line heading into this game. They were shooting only around 72, 73%. So not a great free throw shooting team. And you hate to look at that stat after a game, especially if you lose. Nice hustle by Amy here, but she can't save it. Save it. So it's back in the hands of Whitcomb. Well, Le Pena, he wants to try and deny that woman, Lauren. Lauren Jackson, though, just goes right out of Chanwa. Little turnaround jump shot. I don't know how much better you can defend that. But goodness me, Lauren Jackson is putting on a show for about 9,000 fans here at the Superdome, Zania. And you can't defend it. 
Uh, Chango really struggling to slow it down. Nice hands by Blitzavs, but it's going to stay Canada ball. They have seven seconds on the shot clock. And uh, Caitlin George, no, wait, let's talk about the GOAT. Look at this, turned around, jump shot. Beautiful, hard to guard at Tangwa. Can't do anything about it, but her bench, love it. Lauren Jackson, looking as good as she did when she was young. <laughs> Nurse has to put it up as shot clock is winding down. Jackson comes up with the rebound, gets it to Magin. And what I love too is how happy her teammates on the bench are for Lauren Jackson. Yep. Well, why not? You go inside to Lauren Jackson every single time. Good job there by Amy here. No call by the referees as she finally misses. Yeah. I, I would go to the same move every time to until they stop it and they do hit back door cut by bridget carlton is going to be called an offensive foul referee saying she pushed off of sammy wickham so the ball is going to go back to australia australia now just look comfortable out there and look at this she does push sammy in the back and sammy wickham just plays with so much passion wickham up to George. Again, they get it back in to Lauren Jackson. And that's an and one! Lauren Jackson with an and one. And she is adding to this total 21 big points for the GOAT. Number 25, Lauren Jackson. And right now, Lauren Jackson is putting on an absolute post clinic down here, takes the hit, finishes the layup and she deserves an and one at the line that she makes. Lauren Jackson, oh, we came to see the show, baby, and I'm enjoying it. She knows what is on the line, and talk about a player stepping up on the biggest stage. That is Lauren Jackson. She's done it her entire career, Azania. Carlton, three-point shot, back rim. And again, these are good looks by Canada, especially some of their shots. They're just not falling. And we mentioned tired legs. Maybe that really is coming into play. Lauren Jackson hits the back of the rim. Um, we haven't talking about tired Carlton. You know, she hasn't shot well today. Emmy here has a mismatch over Whitcomb. Can't come up with it. Ball's on the ground. There's a hustle. Good job there by the captain, Tess Madgen. Well, Australia now, they're going to hold it for one last shot in this third quarter. Wickham is blocked by Emmy here, though. Great defensive job. There's shot clock. They can get a shot off. Can they? They do, but it doesn't go in as it hits the front of the rim. So big, big, big third quarter for Australia. And, you know, big third quarter for Lauren Jackson and Australia as they are leading Canada at the end of three, 71 to 54. Well, they're up 17 Australian. I probably think all 17 are Lauren Jackson's points. They're uh, shooting 18 from 30, 60% uh, and 30 from the three point line. And we get to see the best plays of the third action and uh, uh, third quarter. And all the action was all Lauren Jackson and there, Sammy Whitcomb rolled right into that three. She plays, I've said it, with so much emotion, so much passion, and really have taken over this bronze medal game that Victor La Pena is really under the pump and not sure what else you can do to stop. Lauren Jackson, L. J. looking young, wild, and free again. I like it, young, wild, and free. She is throwback Lauren Jackson right now. This is what people wanted to see. And she is giving them a show. And everyone, including her teammates, are loving it as well. Well, Canada, it's not over. There's 10 minutes left. 
you're going to do whatever you can. I imagine Canada coming out. They're going to have to take some risks. They're going to have to pick up aggressively, put a little bit more pressure in the full court on the defensive end, I believe. And you know, the referees were calling fouls early. Well, especially in that second quarter for Canada. Maybe you got to get to the basket, see the ball go in at the free throw line, stop the clock and climb your way back into this Yeah, one. but they need defensive stop. Letting Australia score 20 points in that quarter is way too many. 10 minutes left here in the bronze medal game. Australia up 71 to 54 over Canada. Kali, tough jump shot. Alexander saves it and throws the ball off of Blitzav. So nice heads up play there by Kayla Alexander. And Alexandra now is on four fouls, so she's just gonna have to play as tough as she can. How about this, Kayla Alexander, but it went off, oh, I thought it went off the leg of Kayla George. And then she hit it back, and it ricocheted back here. We get to see a great angle. So that was off of Kayla. No, it ricochets off of her knee right it there does? at the end, yeah. Yep, it's the right call. George, inside to Ezzy, and a reach-in foul from behind is Nurse. But you know what, Canada's playing small ball as Achamwa is on the bench getting a breather right now. So they only have Kayla Alexander. Someone's got to guard either George or Magbegor. Yeah, real mismatch, and they're really exploiting that height difference, really looking for it. Australia doing a good job on that. Canada now in a 2-3 zone out of that inbounds play. They find Talbot. Talbot goes inside to Magbegor. Magbegor spins, finds Blitzavs. Blitzavs, little two-point shot off the mark. Nurse with the rebound. Good defense there by Canada. Carlton just goes all the way to the basket. Can't finish. Alexander with the rebound, kicks it out. Nurse playing a little bit of one-on-one -on -one here. And Blitzaff thought she was going to be rewarded with a block, but instead it's going to be a foul. So Nurse going to the free throw line. This is what I talked about. You're down. You need to get to the free throw line and score while the clock stops, right? Yeah, that's a good point, Shona, as we see the, the block and the foul is uh, in the first and the second we've seen if you drive to the basket, you're gonna get rewarded. Nurse though, you've gotta hit your free throws, honey, if you're gonna chip back into this game. Nurse's shot hit the front of the rim, almost comes up with a rebound, but Madgen there says, nope, it's all mine. Here misses both free throws. And Canada, they're trying to protect their bigs as they are back in a 2-3 zone against Australia. Talbot is fouled by Naira Fields. This is so tough, Shona, because this tournament has been so gritty, so, uh, I guess physical in the fouling aspects that now that probably what hasn't been called throughout the tournament is being called and really putting pressure on both teams, in my opinion, having to adjust. Well, Australia could adjust. Can Canada adjust? And again, I really think it's more the bench play that Australia are showing their yeah, talents. Right. Yeah. You know, they have people coming off the bench and are contributing a little bit more than Canada. Alexander, she's been quiet, almost dribble dribble, throws it up, nice defense by George Talbot, is leading the break. She decides to slow it down though. Fancy ball handling there by Steph Talbot. They have a mismatch inside, they get it to Magbegor. She finds Magin, extra pass to Talbot. Blitzaf's wide open underneath, and she doesn't miss it. Really nice basketball from Australia. Moving the ball around, getting the ball inside, and ultimately getting an easy two. Naira Fields, strong take. And really Naira Fields could get 
that any time I think that her speed can really get herself to the rim. They go inside to Mac Bagore. Double comes. Tough, tough shot. I don't know how she got that off, but she did. So great job by Ezzy Magbagor. That was incredible by her. Pretty much double teamed. Alexander, little left hand shot is off the mark. So Canada having a tough time scoring here in the second half of this game. And the lead just seems to be ballooning for Australia. Mag Begore, tough take, but it's gonna be a foul on the ground. As you see Carlton say, no, no, I think it's a hooking foul. Let's have a look. I understand her thought process. Yeah, yeah, and here's the tough, she has two on her, all over her arms. And really, that one should be a foul. I don't know how she scored it, but she did. <laughs> she did. Strong finish. Well, ball up, imagine. Gets it to Talbot. Talbot trying to create. Oh, what a crossover as she gets all the way to the basket. And it's an and one for Steph Talbot. And what a tournament Steph Talbot has had for Australia. And really a great tournament. One of her best, in my opinion, here. Puts it on the floor, crossover, finish, takes the contact and lays down. Take a rest, Albert, because you are putting in overtime. And she makes the free throw. That puts Talbot on 16 points. She's four from four from the free throw line. And Steph Talbot, honestly, maybe a little bit underrated for this Opal's team, team. Yep, because agree. other people maybe are a little bit flashier, score a little bit more than her. She leads this team in minutes per game, but by a lot. Like the second person is six minutes less per game than her. She has the most rebounds on this team per game, most assists per game. She does a little bit, most steals. Yep. So obviously Coach Brondello knows her value. And now we see some substitutions for Canada as Koenig checking into the game, getting some of her first minutes here in the bronze medal game. And that ball goes out of bounds and it's back to the Opals. Six minutes and 20 seconds left here until we find out the winner of the bronze medal, Australia leading 80 to 56. Australia really in control. I was worried about their emotional loss yesterday, but you couldn't even tell as uh, a rare turnover by Blitzavs. Uh, yesterday was so tough. And remember, they played, they finished that game at 10. I think we wrapped up at half past 10. And then to turn around a quick sleep and then to tip off the game at 1 p.m., this is incredible to Recover, see. Recover, scout. Yep. Incredible to see by the Opals right now as the crowd wills them on. Carlton, that's gonna go off the rim and out of bounds, ball back. And the crowd is cheering because number 25 is back in the game. And when you're up so much, put Lauren in, she's played incredible. This will be her last game, minutes played today. 17 minutes and she's averaging 8.20, but throw that out the window because she has 22 points. Imagine they go right inside to Lauren. She kicks it out, extra pass, Blitzavs in the corner, that's off. Emmy here with the rebound. And now Canada, you have five and a half minutes left. You still need to play hard. Yeah. You want to give whatever you have left. This is the bronze medal game. Achamwa, nice two-point shot in the short corner there. Canada now sitting in that zone because they are trying to protect their bigs. George, nice screening as she was open after the screen because they are so worried about Lauren Jackson. Yeah. And that's a lovely play there by George. Really everything looking fantastic for 
Australia. Canada really looking out of sync from even yesterday, and that's yeah. what's so worrying about yesterday. Fields to Amy here, takes the contact and finishes. Good finish by her. Is That was the style that you then bring in to today, you know? They had played so well this whole tournament and kind of lost themselves. Well, how about that pass as they just really throw it up? And uh, we're just some technical difficulties. It's just a uh, band on the floor. The, the Canada women wear a, uh, what's it, a heart rate monitor, and it just popped out. As we see Lauren Jackson working so hard and really has that height advantage. You just throw it up there and she'll go get it. Also cleaning up some blood, so we'll just have a quick timeout. And we'll listen in to Victor La Pena's. Okay, go into regular zone. Okay, you here, you here, that, bring it. Okay, at least try to defense black, okay? Because, you know, try to defense black here with Lauren Johnson. Problems, and when she passes the ball, run back. A match. Okay, and don't give, the, don't give her more and more and more easy points. You know, in office, straight forward. Yeah. Wow. Motion, 45, okay, 40. Can't try to get more than one-on-one. As Victor Lupena uses his last time out here, you know, he wants them to compete until that final buzzer no easy points he talks about. Stop giving him easy points. Yeah, how he speaks, he's like he's singing, right? <laughs> Please, stop. But anyway, who cares? It's a Lauren Jackson show, everyone. 24 huge points, unstoppable underneath the paint, really showing uh, the young Lauren Jackson, and I'm enjoying it. Koenig. Gets it up to Fields. Fields penetrates baseline. That's a tough reverse layup. Lauren Jackson there with a the rebound. George. To get it back to Talbot. Guess what? Look who they are going into. It's Lauren Jackson as she's fouled by Emmy here. And Emmy here, not happy, but listen you got to maybe release the contact because that's what Lauren Jackson wants. She likes the physical bump. Maybe let go of that contact and then use your speed and get round. But they're just trying to uh, play pound for pound. And right now, Lauren's going to win that. Pal Pasol likes it. So do I, pal. Well, another two points for Lauren Jackson. She is just adding to this total. And this is vintage Lauren Jackson we are seeing here today. She's got 26 points. She fouls Bridget Carlton's jump shot. So that is going to be Jackson's fourth foul. And Bridget Carlton will get to go to the free throw line. Well, she better not foul out this last three minutes for four. She needs to stay in the game. She makes the first. Good job there by Bridget Carlton. We have just over three and a half minutes left to play in this fourth quarter. Canada sitting in that zone as that's what you do. You penetrate and attack the zone and kick it and find the shooters and Tess Madgen, the captain from Australia, is able to knock it down. And uh, Australia really slicing up and then a turnover. I, I, I blinked and they must have... I, I agree with you. So Naira Fields is rewarded with the turnover. Sorry, we were too busy talking. It looks 
good. Talbot almost with the offensive rebound on Georgia's miss. Koenig, though, comes up with it. Carlton now, her three-point shot. They look good. She's had a couple misses that have hit front rim or back rim, but they are on the mark, and they are just not falling here today, unfortunately, for Bridget Carlton and Canada. Yeah, usually uh, she hits those just so right, Shona. She's been stuck on the... She made that first three-point shot of the game, and I thought it was going to be a great day. Yeah, she's on seven. Jackson. Jackson, Jackson. <laughs> Turnaround jumper is fantastic. She cannot miss right now. The hoop is oh so big. Well, we've talked about her stepping up in big games throughout her career, and she is doing that here tonight as we see some substitutions for both teams. Alexander back into the game for Canada along with Kia Nurse. And then and that beautiful jump shot, Sona. Sorry, I like the That's highlight. All right. And uh, just going back to Bridget Carlton, she's two from 12 today. And you see the smiles, and they're close to celebrating. Lauren Jackson. Fouled out, Alexandra. Are you sure it wasn't the reach-in? Uh, might be. Well, Lauren Jackson yes, is definitely right. all smiles. She looked really nervous before the game. Yes, she did. I mean, her face was, considering a woman has played in so many big games during her career. And uh, I love MVP is ringing out <laughs> around the arena. She's definitely put on an MVP performance as she hits this free throw and it puts her on 30 points. Let's give her a round of applause. Well, a standing ovation here. Over 9,000 fans. And you see the hug. Lauren Jackson is checking out and oh so serious still. 30 points here today in the bronze medal game. What a performance and what a career by Lauren Jackson, the Australian GOAT. Emmy here, spin move. Great job by her as she draws the foul and makes the bucket. She's she still a... hasn't cracked a smile. No. She's so serious. <laughs> There's one. She's a true competitor. And now Talbot will get her choice. A uh, round of applause. Incredible tournament by Talbot. This is the best tournament I have ever seen, Steph Talbot. Oh, that's Kayla George there. Really filled with emotion. Well, some of the young players for Canada getting an opportunity like we saw them yesterday against the USA. We have Taya Hansen on the court along with Filipina Che and Maya Gilles for Canada, along with Koenig and Leticia Ami here. Imagine inside to Tolo, Tolo easy two point bucket. And there's so many of these Australian players we could talk about and the tournaments that they have had, but I think a big reason for Australia's success has to be Steph Talbot and, Steph Talbot and Mariana Tolo. Emmy here's three point shot off the mark. Hansen there hustling for the rebound. I think you can really talk about this whole Opals team. As you go down the line, I think everyone's done their job. I think everyone's stayed in their lane. Everyone's known uh, what their job is, what their role is, and they've done so well. Nobody's really come out anything crazy. Imagine. Great three-point shooting in this tournament is the captain as that shot's off the mark. Filipina comes down. Che with the defensive rebound. These two teams played each other earlier in group play, and what a game that was. Australia winning 73, 75, sorry, to 72. Hansen, three-point shot, hits the front of the rim. Madgen comes up with a defensive board. And that woman in the game for Australia, she's played very limited minute, uh, minutes, is Maylee. Little, little, she's trying to take the inner Lauren Jackson in her <laughs> with that shot. She's like, but I saw Lauren do it. 
Amy here, little pull-up jump shot at the free throw line is no good. Nice hustle by Che. Ball into the hands of Matchin, though. And Lee Maley. Back to Magin. They're gonna have to get a shot up. 10 seconds on the shot clock, about 22 seconds on the game clock. Maley. Trying to get Maley a basket. Maley to Tolo. And that is gonna be a 24 second shot clock violation. So now she's smiling. Lauren Jackson knows what she has done and it's absolutely incredible to come back after a six year absence, 41 years old, all the knee injuries she has had to go through to get back and compete at this level just proves to you how amazing she is. Last shot opportunity for Canada. Che, no good. And they're gonna let it wind down as Australia now are all smiles. They have won bronze here at this year's FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup on home court at the Sydney Superdome, 95 to 65 over Canada. And such an emotional win as Kayla draws is in absolute tears. And how much it means to this Golden Green Opals team. They brought back Lauren. She came out and absolutely performed today. What a performance. 30 big points for the vintage queen of basketball. Wow, that was a great game for her. You said it, wow. I'm not sure how else you could describe Lauren Jackson's tournament, but then also her performance here tonight. Absolutely outstanding. And she deserves this bronze medal. As from the entire game, I felt like Australia dominated, but it was really the second half. They locked in defensively, only allowing Canada 22 total points in that entire second half. That's a great point. Their defense really turned up and showed up. And from their defense, really got easy out uh, break. Layups, Talbot getting on the rim. Oh, they're going to pick up Lauren Jackson and she doesn't want it to happen. <laughs> I'm too old for that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I love it. Look, they're going to do it. Go on. Yes, Lauren Jackson. You are the queen of basketball and we love it. Raise her up to the gods because she's so worth it. Oh, I love that moment. And going back to uh, Australia, really, other than that first loss, uh, to France, where we were really worried. Yeah. They started to really build momentum, beating Mali, beating Serbia, beating Japan, getting in the quarterfinals, beating Belgium, and then they only lose uh, to China last night by two, which was an incredible game, and then this is well deserved. And there's the stats, really. 18% from the three-point line. Canada struggled. They lost the rebounding game. They also uh, lost the assists and the steals, it was all Australia. 42 rebounds, and then Jackson, the queen of basketball, 30 big points, and Kia Nurse leading top scorers for Canada with 19. So, there we have it, and we get to see the best players of the second half, Shona, and it will be this woman, <laughs> Lauren Jackson. Yeah, you said it. I believe she had nine points at halftime, so she was absolutely outstanding, especially in that third quarter where Australia started to pull away. But goodness me, what a performance from all of these Opal players. This is the fourth bronze medal for Australia at a FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. It is their sixth medal overall at a World Cup, so congratulations. I was worried at the beginning of the tournament. I didn't think I couldn't have imagined Australia being on the podium at the end of 10 days of amazing, amazing basketball. Well, we should have, right? Because we got to uh, vote beforehand uh, with uh, FIBA, who we thought was going to be on the podium. And when I really think about it, I, I misjudged them and misdoubted them. We should have gave them more uh, as they are home. Uh, you know, that's such a big part, the home crowd to get you over the line. But also this group has been together for quite some time. They've really put in the work and it showed off. And now 
they get to have the bronze medal. That's the best position you, well, best uh, medal you could get at this point, and they worked hard for it. Well, congratulations to Coach Sandy Brondello and her staff, because it's not just the players, it's also the staff, and there are many of them around as we get to enjoy the Australians celebrating this special moment. And let's not forget, we need to give a hats off to Canada, yep. because I'm pretty sure a lot of people before this tournament Didn't never even imagined, imagined Canada moving on after the group play. And out of group play, they finished second in this group. Australia finished first in the group of death. Canada beat Serbia 67 to 60. A big win and a statement win over France 59-45. They beat Japan, the reigning silver medalist at the Tokyo Olympics 70 to 56. They fell to Australia 75 to 72 in that fifth game of group play. Fourth game, excuse me. Finished group play with a win over Mali, 88-65. Beat Puerto Rico in the quarterfinals, 79-60. Fell to Australia tonight. So what a game, what a tournament for both these teams. Australia, bronze medalist here at the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup with a win over Canada, 95-65. to We have the gold medal game coming up. China are taking on the USA. From Shona and Azania, Thanks for tuning in and witnessing history and vintage Lauren Jackson. We will be back with the finals in a couple hours. Thank you and good night. Thank you.